Hi, this is Connor here for Avid Visions, and today I'm doing our third photo fact of the week, and this is the first user-requested photo fact of the week. Uh, today I'm going to be talking about filters. Um, so I'm breaking this into three distinct types of filters that I'm going to be talking about. Um, so that's absorptive filters, filters that use chemicals to just absorb the light, um, dichrotic dichroic, rather, filters, um, filters that use wave patterns and interference to block light, and I'm going to use, or talk about polarizing filters, which are filters that use um, properties of light waves coming in to block out some light. And while doing this, we can cover a bunch of different kinds of filters because these are kind of um, a broad spectrum. It's not like these are the only three kinds of filters. These are three methods that filters use to alter the light getting into your camera. So, quick start. Um, we have our filter right here, right? And it's going to screw on to the lens of your camera right here, right? We'll draw a little nice little kit lens for some starters because you don't want to new people to photography, filters are some of the first things that you get. So, um, basically the idea is light's going to come into this filter, uh, and when it gets to the glass right here, something's going to happen to it, maybe it gets bounced back off, maybe only part of it gets transmitted, or, um, who knows, maybe it gets changed entirely. So that's the basic idea of what filters are doing. Absorptive filters, what they normally rely upon is there's actually a few pieces of glass, right? So this is a cross section of the filter where this is the um, ring, we'll call it a ring, on the outside. Uh, there'll be a little sandwiching of glass, right? And the glass will be coated or on one side or both sides, so we can say it's like coated here or here or whatever. Or there can be just a chemical substance inside of the filter that when light rays um, go through it, they will either get stuck, absorbed by this material, or they'll continue through. And that's all based on the wavelength of the light. Um, so to understand what we mean by this, you might want to watch some of the other videos, but I might have explained it better in there. But um, basically, light is an electromagnetic wave, so that means you have an electric field, which is just like little forces that act on charge. So think like when, you have, when you're have when you walking across a rug and you're building up a static electricity, and then you go up to a doorknob and touch it and you see that little zap, that's an electric field becoming so large that you can kind of see it. It's actually a voltage breaking down air. Um, so we have our electric field here representing part of the light and it has a perpendicular component that's a magnetic field. Um, so this isn't super key to understanding filters. The important part is that you realize that well we have a different we have specific wavelengths of light right so the wavelength is like the distance from a trough to a trough or from a crest to a crest and you'll also see that uh, you can go either by the magnetic or electric fields. It doesn't matter. And this, the Greek letter lambda is normally how we represent wavelength. Um, so the wavelength of the light determines the color of the light. And the wavelength of the light also has something to do with how much energy is stored inside of the light. Um, so for different chemicals in here, um, they might be good at absorbing different wavelengths of light. So we'll say that this is light wave A of lambda 1, and this over here is light wave 2, lambda 2. Wavelength 1, we'll say, is 700 nanometers. We'll say wavelength 2 is 400 nanometers, just to show you that they're different. And humans, by the way, can see roughly 380 to 720 nanometer wavelength light, where this is really blue light, and this is really red light. Um, so 
Like I said earlier, different wavelengths carry different amounts of energy, and different uh, chemical elements can absorb different quantas of energy really well. So we can say that this this um, chemical element in between these two filters, we'll say, is really, really good at absorbing these 400 nanometer wavelength lights. So it'll absorb all of the blue light that's going in to this filter and transmit all of the red light. And so that would be a red color filter. And that's why when you look through it, when you look through one of the red filters, it actually looks physically red um, because only red light is going through to your eye from the filter. Uh, so that's basically the basis of any color filter. This one I said would like pass higher uh, wavelength light sources better than low wavelength light sources and that makes it a red filter but the opposite is true we can say we have another filter that passes um, lower wavelengths uh, and that would be a blue filter so we have absorptive I don't know how to spell absorptive uh, filters only pass specific bands of light based on wavelength. And that's how they get their desired effects, whether that is um, being a color filter or like a graduated color filter or anything like that. Um, and then we have the other filters I was talking about, which is a dye Croic filter. And so what this does, again, you have kind of a sandwiching um, going on between two pieces of glass. Dichroic filters are used mostly for scientific purposes um, because they are really more precise. Um, absorptive filters, these are like really cheap and easy to make uh, pretty well. Uh, so this is going to be your everyday filter but a dichroic filter is a little bit different. So remember how I was telling you earlier how light is just made up of waves? Well, waves can add, and that's called interference. So think about if you're over here, right, and you are actually in a swimming pool. Actually, we'll draw this line flat. And you have your friend over here, also in the swimming pool, and your friend is pushing water at you. So your friend is pushing a wave of water at you, and it's moving that way. But you know how this always goes. You're having a splash fight. So you're going to push a wave back, right? And what happens when they're traveling in opposite directions like this? They're going to meet in the middle, kind of go really high, and kind of like cancel each other out. None, neither one of you is going to get too much wave. So that kind of applies to light waves, too. This is a really basic example, actually. But um, So say we have, this is our electric field that we were talking about earlier of one light wave right? And say we have a second light wave traveling over it at the exact same time, but reversed like that, right? So when this wave is going like this, we're tracing it out that way, this wave is getting traced out this way. They're going to add together and become nothing, right? They completely cancel each other out. So there is no up and down motion, no traveling electric field moving up and down like this. That's not happening anymore. It's nothing. So the light actually has stopped. It's disappeared. Um, and that's the basic principle of these dichroic filters. You have small mirrors in one of the sides of glass and some mirrors in the opposite side. So what will happen is light will go in, right? And when it hits that mirror, it's going to bounce off backwards and cancel itself out if it is a specific wavelength again. And that is determined if it cancels itself out or not by this distance right here. So specific wavelengths will either cancel themselves out completely, right? So that'll be a flat line. Some will come really close to canceling themselves out. And that would be an almost flat line and would transmit poorly. Um, but some wavelengths, what will happen is it'll come in, and the way that it bounces back will actually be in phase, right? So we have it adding to itself. If I have two waves going here, and we have these are the two waves, you see they're just kind of 
like superimposed upon each other, they add together and become an even larger light wave. Um, so that's what happens here, right? These waves get kind of canceled out, but this wave we're going to say is coming in, it's making itself larger, hits this mirror, and goes through, right? So we're being much, much more selective about what wavelengths of light get passed and amplified uh, than just don't get through at all. So that's a dichroic filter, a little bit um, trickier. And really, that's more of a medical kind of practice. It's pretty specific. Uh, polarizing filter, hopefully I can wrap this up quickly, uh, is pretty easy. So I'm going to give you an analogy to explain what polarization actually is. Say we have this fence. We have a picket fence, run in the mill. There we go. And you're standing over here, and you have a jump rope in your hand, and your friend is over on the other side of the fence, and he has, or she has, whatever, you know, the other side of the jump rope. So this is the jump rope. You see it coming through here. And so you guys want to communicate by kind of like shaking the rope, you know, and the pulse is going to travel along. But because you're going through this slot in the fence, you can only shake it up and down, right? If you move your hand side to side like that, it's just going to get blocked and stopped by the fence. It's not going to get through and your friend's not going to know that you sent a signal. You need to send the pulse up and down, and then your friend will totally be wiggling a jump rope with you. Um, so that's the idea of a polarizer, basically. The fence is acting as a polarizing agent. Um, so you can think of that as your filter just being like a really finely grained fence. So only light that happens to have its E field in the right direction will be able to come through on the other side. And light that's not in the right direction, say we have something coming completely perpendicular to the slots, won't make it through to the other side. There's nothing over here. Um, so that's the idea with polarization. And you have sunlight, just normal sunlight, is uh, just over here. It shoots out light in kind of all directions, right? Like you see these squiggly lines coming off the sun in a lot of drawings. And that's actually kind of interesting because um, it's indicative that the light isn't polarized, or at least that's how I think of it. Um, so sunlight's coming in from all directions. And because of some math and physics, about one half of the sunlight that gets in actually goes through. Only one half. And so we'll just say like that's all the sunlight coming out this side, but it's like much brighter on this side, right? You have a whole nother stop of sunlight on this side of the polarizing filter. Um, so that's what it does to unpolarized light, cuts it in half. But that's not the interesting part. The interesting part is what happens when light gets reflected off of certain materials, like water, right? So we have water down here. Light's coming into it, and it's going to bounce off at the same angle that it comes on, right? And then some of it gets transmitted, but it's refracted, and yeah. I'm being sloppy, also normally you always label angles with the normal incident, so whatever. Um, but when you are reflecting off of certain surfaces, mostly like lakes or other uh, non-metallic surfaces, you can polarize the light coming out. If you have just random order coming in here, light waves are hitting on all sides. When it comes out, you have the E-field polarized perpendicular to the surface of the water or whatever you're reflecting off of, uh, like glass or anything. Um, and then when that goes through the filter over here, It'll either, if you have the filter at the same angle as the water or whatever we're talking about, it'll pass perfectly. But if you have the filter perpendicular, nothing will pass at all. And that gets rid of glares and reflections. Um, so that's why polarizing filters can be used to see kind of through water and lakes a little bit, which is kind of cool. And also cut back on reflections on mostly non-metallic surfaces. Um, and polarizing filters are also known for making the sky a lot darker, and that's kind of because of a similar reason to this, right? You have a lot of uh, moisture and, like, water molecules floating around in the air, and light's kind of being bent through them and bouncing off of them, and it's going to be polarized more so than just the ambient light. So if you're facing 90 degrees away from the sun so that you don't just have a ton of random sunlight coming in here because at 90 degrees the sunlight will like try and be hitting the side of your lens, not directly going in. Uh, so if you're 90 degrees away from the sun, 
facing away from the sun. You're getting all this reflected light, a lot of which from lakes or from up in the sky is going to be polarized and that won't be let through your lens. And that's why polarizing filters can make skies really dark and blue and make lakes not full of glare. So I hope that you've learned something. I know this was one of the longer videos and I apologize for that, but hopefully you enjoyed it and I'll see you next week. Thanks.